Lord Mayor, so many honoured and distinguished guests, friends. As always, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome members of the Priory of Wales of the Order of St John to this, your mother church, and to say, welcome home. But it is a particular honour today to welcome those who are personally associated with the 130th St John Field Ambulance, whose work and whose members we, we commemorate today, and for whom we thank God. So it is my wish that you will enjoy your time with us, and that you will feel your sense of the everlasting arms of God, enfolding us with his mercy and love. We are here to worship Almighty God, whose purposes are good, whose power sustains the world he has made, who loves us though we fail in his service, who gave Jesus Christ for the life of the world, and who by his Holy Spirit leads us in his way. Giving thanks for his great works, we commemorate today the 130th St. John Field Hour and ask for his help and blessing on St John Cymru Wales today and all whom we serve. Therefore, that this afternoon be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray to the Lord. As our prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, and if you do what I command you, I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. It's mud and fire. Private Timothy Richards, 48181, wrote the following letter home after the battle at the Met Wood. From somewhere in France. I am quite safe and day one at present. No doubt you have heard of the great advance that we have made. Our division has done excellent work in the advance. I should very much like to tell you where. But I cannot. We went into action last Friday week and was in 36 hours without a rest. It has never been known before for the RAMC to take up the position we took as we were right up against the infantry in the front line. It was hell upon earth, and the way we worked is a credit to our unit. We had the name of being the best field ambulance out here and had not been in action. And now we have proved it in action. We started out in some cases. We had to come through the old German communication trench and what a hole it was. We started at 6 a.m. at the trench and we were knee deep in mud. There was an inferno of fire while we were in this place and it is marvellous how any of us came out alive. It took us 12 hours to go 400 yards, with high explosive and shrapnel bursting all around us. One of the boys shouted, over the top boys, and take our chances. And we were ready for it. Beat to the world as we were, over the top we went. An officer waiting to pass us shouted, for God's sake, come back. Of that we took no notice, as it was the only chance we had to get the boys back. On and on we went, the mud weighing us down. We stuck to it like heroes, every one of us, and got back to the hospital alive. We were very fortunate in only having two killed and two slightly wounded. A shell hit one and a sniper had the other. We had 16 hours rest after that and in a game for 60 hours. Because 
Gazette, Distinguished Conduct Medal Citation, 4A124, Sergeant T.G. Hopkins, GOP. Heavy shadow and more severe casualties among artillery men and transport on a road. In spite of difficulty and great danger, he went to the aid of the wounded, extricated them from tangle of kicking animals, and carried them to comparative shelter of shambles. He carried four wounded men, one after another, on his back. On a later date, he brought back many wounded from an area heavily swept by machine gun fire. He was twice blown up by shells, but managed to reach the advanced dressing station and notify where the wounded were collected before he collapsed. His gallantry and self-sacrificing devotion to duty are peculiarly admirable. At their penultimate reunion 50 years ago, 14 of the men of the 130th gathered around the plaque we're dedicating today and remembered their comrades. Today, for the first time since the last reunion in 1966, we have come together to do that once more. The men represented here by their relatives today are 48071 Regimental Sergeant Major William Stroud, 
48192, Sergeant Donor Sweetie, Military Medal, Private Gare. 48084, Private Isaac Beecham. 48542, Private James Cleves. 48098, Private William Coleman, Military Medal. 48119, Private George Groves. 48554, Private George Jickles. 48155, Private Suella Lewis. 48160, Lance Corporal William Walter. 48563, Private Guy Phillips, Military Medal, Medina Rules. 48157, Private David Thomas, Military Medal. The men of the 130 were extraordinarily brave men, who were true to St. John tradition, thought nothing of risking their lives to save others. The majority of these were Welshmen and others who had come to Wales to work and, had, and who shared one thing in common, the St. John Ambulance Brigade. The ethics of duty and care to those in need were deeply ingrained in these men's lives. A perfect example of this is William Coleman, who was awarded the Military Medal for Gallantry when he carried the wounded officer to safety on his back. Coleman was gassed and temporarily blinded. He returned to duty with the Colonial North Colliery Ambulance Team alongside four of his brothers. Over 40 years later, he came out of retirement to assist with the rescue at the Six Bells Colliery disaster. The commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Johnny E.H. Davis from Wrexham, who was awarded the Distinguished Service Order of his leadership, was the only Welsh commanding officer in charge of the Welsh unit to retain his command throughout his tenure during the war. His men were awarded three military crosses, three Distinguished Conduct Medals, 25 military medals, two Prodigare, two Meritorious Service Medals, and five mentioned in dispatches. A solid and highly creditable record. Today, we remember all the men, many of whom contracted fatal illnesses while in service, or who never successfully recovered from the rigours of war or their wounds and passed on within only months or years of their return home. Men like Isaac Beecham, who transferred to Mesopotamia and died of malaria, Joseph Walters, who died at home with the Spanish flu, and R.S. Evelyn Stroud, who, having been wounded and gassed, suffered greatly from pleurisy and rheumatism from the end of 1917 and died aged only 52 in December 1918. We also remember, especially today, those of the 130th who didn't come home, killed in action or died of wounds while serving, one of whom died during one of two bombing raids on the St. John Hospital at Itat. 48217, William West of Hunter Wayne. 56231, William Houston of Bolton. 48583, Thomas Jones of Penlook. 48597, Frank Ward of Edworth. 79109, Herbert Bills of Gillingham. 66510, Irving Edmondson of Nelson, Lancashire. 61343, Norman Hayne of Toronto, Canada. 48589, Isaac Roberts of Belmont. 48563, Yann Phillips of Abertillery. M2052076, James Tickner of Hazelhead. The diaries of my wife's grandfather, Jim Cleves, hide so much of the horror he saw while serving at the 130th. But he did talk to his son, Glyn, about his war. His talks with his father moved Glyn to write a poem. I read this now in remembrance of the men of the 130th. All those St. John men who served in Gallipoli a hundred years ago, and all who served in that dreadful war. 1914-18 by Glyn Cleves. Once I heard the gentle voice of the man who turned the pages of his world. That little room was filled with a wealth of words and tear-stained photographs. Scattered helmets there I saw with broken trees, and I smelled the trenches' blood. I heard the roar of hooves and saw the wild-eyed horses tear the tortured earth, pounding down the field's green heart, where little girls had once made their daisy chains, and buttercups had glowed all their butter lives to small throats in the sun. Once I daydreamed snapshot lives where the men in their putties sang as the home fires burned. These were the heroes khaki clad whom I had never seen or heard, yet I knew just how they had laughed and how they had cried with the rain in their flounders rags. Creeping into that little room came the browns and greens daubed by the dead boned hand of the astral world as I touched and shared the things my father knew. Then, I felt the poison breeze burn by streaming eyes.
Almighty and Eternal God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, bless this flock commemorating those who served in the 130th St. John Field Ambulance, that all who see it may be inspired like them to follow the example of your Son, who taught that there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends, and as our Good Shepherd willingly gave his own life for his sheep, an eludium tard mar acus Amen. Amen.
Render the lower fever for you. Strengthen the faith hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people. Love unserveable, rejoicing always in the power of the Holy Spirit. Our family is being for our view, the charge and love our spirit power, our ability and our God, our families. Thank you. 